round five of our texts. See, this spiritual warfare we are talking about, it is an attempt from the pit of hell to say no to what God has already prepared for you. In verse four of our text, he said, this our weapon is mighty, is spiritual. And it is so powerful that I can pull down strongholds. And what is a stronghold? Verse 5. He said to cast down arguments. Arguments. Do you know God has good plan for you? But every day, the devil is arguing it. He's arguing against God's plan for you. God says, you, my son, I have blessed you. And Satan on the other hand is saying, no, you can't bless him like that. Too. Say, my daughter, I have elevated you. And the devil is arguing against it. He says, no, 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 no. It's like a situation where two lawyers have, you know, Debating, arguing in the court of law. Can you imagine the devil trying to say no to God's plan for your life? I don't know how many of you, in your place of work, or in your own personal business, you have given instruction that something should be done this way. And somebody walking under you is turning it the other way around. Do you know how you are going to feel? So who changed what I said should be done like this? Do you know that's what devil is trying to do in your life? What God is setting in place. What God is setting in motion. The devil is trying to argue against it. The devil is trying to have another idea. That's why I say, and every I think that exhort itself against the knowledge of God. So in spiritual warfare, we are to pull them down. This is what the Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter 6. When the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, those in highest places. That's what it means when we talk about spiritual warfare. Every no from the pit of hell against your life is a spiritual warfare. And every one of us is fighting spiritual warfare. From Genesis chapter 3, we started that warfare. Fighting the warfare till we die. Nobody will stop that warfare. The United Nations can come together to stop the war between Russia and Ukraine. They can come together, NATO can come together to stop the war. There is no NATO. There is no United Nation that can stop spiritual warfare. You are either winning or you are losing. You are either winning the war or you are losing. There is nobody that is in the middle. Say, I am not winning, I am not losing. No, it's a lie. You are either winning the battle or you are losing the battle. How do we appropriate the victory of Jesus into our lives? One thing that you need to note is this. For you to win your spiritual warfare, you need weapons. You need weapons. And that's why the Bible says that for the weapons of our warfare, we need weapons. These weapons 
are what the Bible refers to in Ephesians chapter 6 as the whole armor of God. We need weapons. But what kind of weapons? You see the calabash that one Baba will give us. Or one stone that is wrapped with a wool or with thread. Is it one figurine like that that was passed down to us from our great grandfather? You see one thing like that that we are supposed to put somewhere in the house. What is the nature of the weapons we need to fight this spiritual warfare? I want to share with us three features, three characteristics of these weapons. We must be sure that the weapons we are using to fight the devil have these three characteristics. Otherwise, we are going nowhere. Number one, for us to win our spiritual warfare, our weapons of warfare must be spiritual. The weapons of our warfare must be spiritual. The Bible says we do not fight against flesh and blood. We are fighting with unseen power. We are fighting with principalities. We are fighting with spiritual beings. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And what that means is that the weapon of our warfare are not physical. What it means is that the weapons of our warfare are spiritual. And what do we mean by being spiritual? You need to go to Ephesians chapter 6 for you to understand that. The spiritual weapon we are talking about is the sheet of faith. Our faith in Christ Jesus is the belt of truth. Some of us, the reason why we cannot withstand devil is because when we talk, we talk lie. When we speak, we speak lie. People like that cannot win spiritual battle. When we stand, we are in doubt. We are always in doubt. Our weapons must be spiritual. For it to be spiritual, it must be sheet of faith. Belt of truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the Spirit. Which is the word of God. Our feet must be guided with the gospel. Not with gossip and backbiting. The reason why many are not winning their spiritual battle is because they are sold out to gossip and backbiting. Our feet must not be the feet of gossipers. Must not be feet of backbiting. Backtas. Must be feet of the gospel. And prayer must be our lifestyle. That's what it means to have weapons that are spiritual. It is not that calabash that is in that wardrobe. The man who came up with the formula of that calabash is dead. He's <laughs> dead. But Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. The weapons of our warfare must be spiritual. Number two, our weapons of warfare must be strong. Must be very, very strong. When you look at verses 4b and 5 of our text, the Bible says, but they are mighty. Somebody say mighty. The weapons of our warfare are mighty. They are not further away. They are not lighter away. They are mighty. They are mighty in God to pull down strongholds. 
What strongholds? Verse 5 tells us that stronghold. It is a stronghold of arguments. Do you know that there is no time a man or a woman commits sin that he has not argued? Before you do anything bad, you must have argued. You see God telling you, this is the way you should go. You see the devil arguing, don't go that way. When there is money that you feel like you should steal, you see the Spirit of God telling you, don't steal. You see the devil telling you, still small. When you see reasons to commit adultery or anything, you see God say, don't do that. But you see the devil telling you, just do it. When you need to malign somebody, you see God telling you, don't malign this person. You see the devil telling you you know, and so what? Do it, malign him. When your weapons are not strong, you see yourself carrying out the instruction of the devil. You fall for the arguments of the devil. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are strong, they are mighty. Because the person we are dealing with is not a joker. Devil is not a joker. We are the one that do comedy. Devil does not do comedy. Everything he does, it means business. He will say you meant it. Once you enter into his trap, that's it. He doesn't joke. We are the ones that joke. We joke. When he came to Jesus with his arguments, he said, Ah, Jesus Christ, Son of God, how the God will buy last to be a good your job. Are you not hungry? Jesus did not answer him. Because he knows where he was going. He said, can you turn this stone to bread? That was an argument he put forward to Jesus. You have the power. You have fasted for 40 days. Turning stone to bread is, 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 is the smallest of the miracle. But Jesus came up with a strong weapon. Say the word of God says, Man shall not live by bread. Alone. He kept quiet. Then he asked him again. I said, You are the son of God. Why don't you jump from this pinnacle? Even in his war, he said he will send angels to come and guide you. So much that your feet will not touch the ground. Jesus responded with strength strong weapon. The Bible says that shall not put the Lord your God to test. Oh, he said, okay, okay. Jesus, I have this for you. Must you die to win the war? Must you die to save the war? Just take a bow. And I'm going to give you the war. And Jesus came with a strong weapon. Thou shall not worship any other but God. Every time the devil comes with arguments to turn our head upside down to make us go against God's will when our weapons are not strong we easily become a prey in the hand of the devil. He said our weapons are mighty. In God, 
Do you know why? Because this God we are serving. He's a mighty God. He's a living God. He came, the devil came to Abraham one day. Say Abraham. He said, Yes. What do you want from me, Satan? He said, Well, I've just, I've just come to advise you. Say, What's the advice? What's the advice? Hey, how old are you now? Hey, Abraham said, well, I'm about 97, 98. And what about it? He said, you are still trusting God for that covenant child. He said, yes, because God said he will give me one. He said, I beg you forget. Tell God to bless Ishmael. And keep that his covenant child. And for a while, Abraham was almost subscribed to the argument of the devil. When God came in the evening to visit him, say, Abraham, what's going on? He says, all of these are covenant child. I'm tired, though. I'm tired. Maybe there's Ishmael here. Can't you just bless him? And God said, Abraham, stop looking down. Just look at me. And God told him a name he had never heard before. He said, Abraham, I am El Shaddai. I'm the Lord Almighty. I'm the Lord all powerful. I'm the Lord who is able to give you might and strength. I'm going to do it. And Abraham jumped up. When devil came again, he had a strong weapon. He told devil, will you keep quiet? God will give me that covenant child. The reason why many of us are not able to stand it's because our weapons are not strong. The word of God has not found expression. I yet to find expression in our life. We don't remember God's word when devil comes. When it comes with his arguments. Ah, devil, devil is very, very cunning. But when our weapons are strong, when we are loaded with the word of God, when we are kitted with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will pull down the arguments of the devil. Finally, for us to win our spiritual warfare, our weapons of warfare must not only be spiritual and strong, they must also be sincere. Please help me tell somebody beside you, please be real. Hey, be real. <laughs> be original. You know, we, we have a serious issue. Serious issue. We are not too real. The Bible says in that verse 6 of our text, and being ready to punish all disobedience. Let me quickly tell you what the Bible is saying here. What the Bible is saying here is this. All that the devil is saying against God's plan for your life is a form of disobedience. All that the kingdom of hell is saying against your life is a form of disobedience. The Bible now says that you'll be able to cancel it. You'll be able to cancel what devil is saying about your life. You are able to pull down what the devil is saying about your life. When? Your obedience is what? Another translation says, when your obedience is complete. When your obedience is complete. See, when you carry fake weapon, 
<laughs> to go and confront devil. Ah. It's going to be that person seriously. Seriously. The only time you can stand the wise of the devil is when your weapons are spiritual, strong, and sincere. When you are totally obedient to God, our obedience begins with little things like tight, tight, tight. Tight. January has just gone by. I don't know how many of us actually give to God. Is tight and no, not just no. something. No fool alone need that may wear a big article shade that could die. Say, Pastor, generally has passed. Yes, so we are still February 12th. You can make correction. Actually, she has to share or dock a jilao, she can't jilao, she why. When our obedience is not complete, we cannot withstand the devil. For us to withstand the devil, our obedience must be total. We must be original. We must be original. We must be sincere. We must avoid every form of hypocrisy. It is our sincerity that will help us to stand. And pull the stronghold of the devil down. Ogunbela yo. There is war in the world. Yo, bagan so we pe ogunekene. Yo, ruba say. Ogunla yo. There is war. Eh, yato ba ni o so gun wanti get here. Musiya si galeli yo. Wanti get here. Ogunbela. Ogunja we yo. War is really troubling some people. Hey, my one I phone I was throughout the So that God will bring a way out. But it's not every time that you be calling on the pastor. Olorun fe ki iwo fun ara re ko doju ko satani ati agbara re. I really want you to confront Satan and his power. O ni o ni o ni lo ohun ija ohun ija ogun. I really need weapon of war. Ti se ohun ti emi. That is a spiritual. Igbagbo ninu Christi. Faith in Christ. Oro Olorun ninu okan re. The word of Christ in your mind. O ti to oro Olorun ninu enu re. Sincerity of the word of God in your mind. Isorodu ati iso ti to Olorun ninu aye re. Sincerity in your life. Oro oro irere Christi it is only in God that we can get power. So I am the Almighty God. So in to ba fe ni o win ja to lagbara o gbodo wa ninu Olorun yen. We want to have this powerful weapon. O win ja wa gbodo je o win ja to to. Our weapon must be that of sincerity. Eyan. To ku onle. Someone that left his To rojo to su. And saw that the weather was cloudy. To su to su dada. And saw that it's about to rain. To wa mu umbrella to je pe ninu orun gan ko le gbo orun de po ti o gboju and brought an umbrella that cannot withstand the wind of the rain se mo pe bojo yen o ba pe ni ojo yen o se dada o wi ja wa gboro se kini o gboro je ti o ti to must be that of sincerity ka gboran si olorun you must be obedient to god we must avoid every hypocrisy. That's when we can just tell Satan that just keep 